Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create this circular logo. First, we will set a grid. Go to the Line Segment tool, click, hold and select the Rectangular Grid tool. Double click on it to open the dialog and make sure that horizontal and vertical dividers are set to the same number. Now click on the artboard, hold and drag. While you are dragging your mouse, press the Shift key to constrain the grid. Then open the Align window, make sure Align to Artboard is checked and choose Horizontal and Vertical Align Center. Now go to View, Guides and choose Make Guides. Next we'll create these overlapping circles. Press the letter L for the Ellipse tool and draw a circle centered on this intersection. Next we we'll rotate it around this anchor point and make several copies. Press the letter R for the Rotate tool and holding down the Alt key click on this intersection to set the rotation point. Type 120 in the angle window and then click Copy. Now press the Ctrl and D keys to make one more copy. With the last circle still selected, switch to the Selection tool and while dragging it to this intersection, press the Alt key as well to make a copy. Now select everything, go to the Shape Builder tool and we'll connect some parts and delete others to form this design. First select a color and then click, hold and drag across these two shapes to connect them. Now select a different color and connect these two shapes. And do it one more time. Next we will delete all the unwanted lines. First press and hold down the Alt key and then click, hold and drag the mouse across the empty shapes. Now switch to the Selection tool, let's resize it, get rid of the stroke and hide the grid. Next we'll add a gradient. Make sure the fill is on top, select one of the shapes and then open the gradient window. I'm going to use these two color swatches. First select the yellow color and then Drag it to the right side of the slider. Now select the green color and drag it to the left side. Press the letter G to show the gradient annotator on the artboard and let's change its direction. Start at the sharp end of this shape and finish it at the outer corner. Now switch to the eyedropper tool and click on the gradient to get a sample. Then press and hold down the Alt key and click on the other shapes to apply it. Now select the other shapes and change the gradient's direction like we did with the first shape. In the next several steps we'll create this effect. First select one of the shapes and let's duplicate it. Press V, Ctrl and C keys on your keyboard to copy it and Ctrl F to paste it in front. When you open the sub layers in layer 1, you will notice the new shape. Next we'll cut it, leaving only this part. First select the pen tool and draw a line across this shape. Try to match its curve with the bottom shape. Now continue around to cover the whole shape and close the path. Select both shapes. Then go to the Shape Builder tool and delete the two big parts, leaving only the small shape. Next we'll adjust its gradient and change the blending mode. With the small shape still selected, go to Gradient and select the white and black option. Change the type to Radial, press the letter G to show the annotator on the artboard 
and adjust it so the black color follows the profile of the shape below and the white color starts halfway through the shape. If you would like to learn more about how to use the gradient tool, please check out my other tutorial. I include a link to it at the end of this video and in the description below. When you are done, open the transparency window and set the blending mode to multiply. If needed, adjust the gradient even more. Next, we'll apply the same gradient to the other two shapes. First, select the transparent gradient and turn the grid back on. Now press the letter R for the Rotate tool and set the rotation point in the center. Leave the angle as it is, click Copy and press the Ctrl and D keys to make one more copy. With this part still selected, right click with your mouse, choose Arrange and bring to front. Select the other shape, lock it, now select the transparent gradient shape we've copied before and bring it to the front like we did with the other one. Now zoom in to check if all the anchor points are aligned. If needed, go to View, make sure the Snap to Grid, Pixel and Point are all unchecked and using the Direct Selection tool, adjust the anchor point's position to match the shape below. Now hide the grid. And of course, you can select any of the shapes and apply a different color to the existing gradient. Now switch to the eyedropper tool, select the sample from the main shape and apply it to the other shapes. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.